Welcome back dear students to video number 7 for standard 10 geometry chapter number 3. In the previous video we discussed practice set 3.3. .3. Now let us continue. Now you have to draw a sufficiently large circle of any radius as shown in figure 3.40. Draw a chord AB and central angle ACB. Take Take any point D on the major arc and point E on the minor arc. Measure angle ADB and angle ACB and compare the measures. Next, measure angle ADB and angle AEB. Now add these measures. You will find that for first one, the measure of angle ACB is twice the measure of angle ADB. And for second one, the sum of the measures of angle ADB and angle AEB is 180 degrees. Second, now next. Third, take points F, G, H on the arc ADB and measure angle AFB, angle AGB and angle AHB. Compare these measures with each other as well as with measure of angle ADB. Fourth, Take any point I on the arc AEB, measure our angle AIB and compare it with angle AEB. For third one, you will find that all the angles AHB, ADB, AFB and AGB are of equal measure. And for fourth one, you will find the measure of angle AEB and angle AIB are equal. My dear students, we are going to make use of these activities later when we prove certain theorems and their corollaries. Next activity, draw a sufficiently large circle with center C as shown in figure 3.41 draw any diameter pq now take points r s and t on both the semicircles you will see point r and s and t shown in figure 3.41 note that each is a right angle when you try to measure these you will find that each is a right angle now the properties you saw in the above activities are theorems that give relations between circle and their angles. Inscribed angle. What is the meaning of inscribed angle? Now in figure 3.42, C is the center of a circle. The vertex D of angle PQD. Sorry, PDQ. Vertex D of angle PDQ lies on the circle. The arms of angle PDQ intersect circle at A and B. Such an angle is called an angle inscribed in the circle or in the arc. So I can say that angle ADB is inscribed in the arc ADB. Now intercepted arc. Observe all the figures given in figure 3.43. There are six figures. Observe them carefully. I am giving you some time to observe these. In each figure, the arc of a circle that lies in the interior of angle ABC is an arc intercepted by that angle ABC. 
the points of intersection of the circle and the angle are end points of that intercepted arc each side of the angle has to contain an end point of the arc now suppose you look at this particular circle then this angle abc is the angle in the interior of the intercepted arc and these are the end points of the arc a and c are the end points both arms of the angle they touch the arc in figure 3.43 first second and third only one arc is intercepted by that angle so have a look at figure 1 2 3 only one arc is intercepted but in figure 4 5 and 6 two arcs are intercepted by the angle these are various possibilities which we are having a look at also know that note that only one side of the angle touches the circle in figure 2 and 5 but in 6, both sides of the angle touch the circle. In figure 3.44, the arc or 3.44, the arc is not intercepted arc. The reason? As arm BC does not contain any end point of the arc. So if you have such a case, then you are not going to call it as an intercepted arc. Because we know that both arms of the circle has to have to touch the arc. Now we are going to see a theorem called as inscribed angle theorem. What does it say? The measure of an inscribed angle is half of the measure of the arc intercepted by it. I'll repeat the measure of an inscribed angle is half of the measure of the arc intercepted by it. Now, according to this, the given information is in a circle with center O, angle BAC, this angle BAC is inscribed in arc BAC, is inscribed in arc BAC. Arc BDC, arc BDC is intercepted by the angle. So this is the inscribed arc and this is the intercepted arc. We have to prove that angle BAC, this angle BAC is half of measure arc BDC. Half of measure arc BDC. But in order to do this, we have to do certain construction. So let us see what is the construction. We have to extend ray OA so that it intersects the circle at E and draw radius OC such that we get a triangle, such that we get a triangle OAC, this triangle. Now let us continue. You have the figure for reference over here. Now, in triangle OAC, we know that OA, side OA is congruent to side OC. Both are radii of the same circle. So, if my sides are congruent, two sides of a triangle are congruent, I can say that the base angles are congruent. Theorem of isosceles triangle. So, my angle OAC, Angle OAC, this angle, is congruent to angle OCA, this angle, reason theorem of isosceles triangle. But I don't know their values, so I am going to assume them, at, them as X. So here I am saying let angle OAC is equal to angle OCA is equal to X. This is my statement 1. Now angle EOC. Where is angle EOC? EOC. This angle is equal to OAC 
plus OCA. I hope you remember exterior angle theorem of a triangle. So on the basis of exterior angle theorem, I am seeing that exterior angle is equal to the sum of interior opposite angles. But I know the values of OAC and OCA, X and X. So this is what I am going to write. Next is equal to X degrees plus X degrees, which is 2X degrees. But EOC I know, EOC is a central angle. That means measure arc EC is also 2X degrees by definition of measure of an arc. This is my statement too. Since my central angle is 2x degrees, the arc is EC is also 2x degrees. Statement 2. So from 1 and 2, now I am going to write that. Therefore, OAC, angle OAC is equal to angle OAC is nothing but EAC. This bigger angle EAC and OAC is the same. So OAC is equal to EAC is equal to half of measure arc EC. See, compare 1 and 2. This is, I am going to name that as statement 3. Now, similarly, what I have done on one side can be done on the other side also. If I join OB, now over here, I can prove that EAB, this angle, is half of measure arc BE. Similar to statement 3, this is what I have proved that I am going to name that as statement 4. EAB, angle EAB is equal to half of measure arc BE. This is my statement 4. Now if I see statement 3 and statement 4, this angle EAC, I am going to add both angle EAC and angle EAB is equal to half measure arc EC plus half measure arc BE by adding statement 3 and 4. Now what is EAC and EAB? Nothing but this big angle, angle BAC. So that is what I have written. Therefore, angle BAC is equal to half is common. So half outside and inside the bracket measure arc EC plus measure arc BE. Measure arc EC plus BE is nothing but this bigger arc BEC. So, my next statement is measure angle BAC is equal to half measure of arc BEC. But measure arc BEC is nothing but measure arc BDC. And proved in statement number 5. So, this proves my inscribed angle theorem which says that the inscribed angle is half of the arc. But over here my dear students, there are other possibilities also. Now, note that we have to consider three cases regarding the position of center of the circle and the inscribed angle. Now, the center of the circle lies, first case, on one of the arms of the angle. If the center lies on one of the arms, if the center is, let's say, this is my angle, my BAC is this, then I have proved this case in statement 3. If I have my state center on one of the arms, then I have proved it in statement number 3. And my second case is the center lies in the interior. If the center lies in the interior, then I have proved the theorem in statement number 4. Or adding 3 and 4 over here. I have proved the theorem over here. But if I have a third case, that means the center lies in the exterior, then we have to move further over here. In this particular figure, shows that center lies in the exterior. Now, in figure 3.46, angle BAC 
is equal to angle BAE. Angle BAC is nothing but this bigger angle BAE minus this angle. So, CAE which is equal to now from 3 I am going to write as angle BAC is half of measure arc BCE this bigger arc minus arc CE because I want only this arc. So, I am going to take the bigger arc and subtract this arc from that. So, which is equal to half of measure arc BCE minus measure arc CE. So, I am left with half of measure arc BC over here. So, angle BAC is equal to half of measure arc BC. And the above theorem also stated, the above theorem can also be stated as follows. The measure of an angle subtended by an arc at a point on the circle is half of the measure of the angle subtended by the arc at the center. Now, on the basis of this, the corollaries of the above theorem can also be stated in similar language. There are two corollaries. First one, angle inscribed in the same arc are congruent. Now, over here, there is a figure. See, if you see, there are two angles, but both angles are inscribed in the same arc. That is angle PTR. So, on the basis of the previous theorem, I can say that measure angle PQR is equal to half of measure arc PTR. And similarly, I can say measure angle PSR is half of measure arc PTR. Over here, this arc is common. So, on the basis of this, I can say that measure angle PQR is equal to measure angle PSR. Therefore, angle PQR is congruent to angle PSR. So, you can write this particular theorem into your notebook on your own. Second one is angle inscribed in a semicircle is a right angle. This is second corollary. Now, if you see this angle inscribed in a semicircle. Angle ABC would be the measure of angle ABC would be half of arc AXC. Now, AXC is a semicircle, so its measure is 180 degrees, and half of that is 90. So, the measure of angle ABC would be 90 degrees. You can write a proof of this corollary also. My dear students, this is all for now. We will meet in the next video. Till then, have a nice day. Thank you for watching.